average, weighted moving average, weighted moving average. Now, in a weighted moving average, weights are assigned to the most recent data. So unlike the moving average, where we were just looking at past data, this time around, we assign weight to the past data. Weight are more or less like importance that are assigned to the past data. So the weighted moving average is giving us summation, the weight multiplied by the demand. The weight multiplied by the demand. And you realize that weights are usually between zero and 100%. The weights are usually between zero and 100%. So once you sum your weight, it should be equal to one. Once you sum your weight, it should be equal to one. Now, from the same example, we're being told that the paper clip company weight 50% for October, 33% for September, and then 17% for August. So what it means is that they have given weight to the various months. They have given weight to the various months here. Now, we are being asked to calculate the three-month moving average. But now, is the three-month weighted moving average. And then we've been given the weight for October, the weight for September, and then the weight for August. So all we do is that we multiply the 50%, which is 0 0.5, by the demand in October, which was 90 plus 33%, which is 0 0.33, by the demand in September. Then we multiply the 17% for October by the demand in August, which was 130. So if you go back and look at the data, you realize that we had 90 for October, 110 for September, and then 130 for August. So that is basically what we have done here. So when we are using the weighted moving average, you realize that the forecast for November will be 103.4 others, 103.4 others. But when we were using the moving averages, when we we're using the normal moving average, you realize that the demand there was 110 others. The demand there was 110 others. Now let's move on. Let's look at exponential smoothing. Exponential smoothing. Exponential smoothing. Now, it is an averaging method that weights recent past data more strongly than more distant data. So what happens is that they put more weight on recent past data than more distant data. So the older the data, the less the importance of the data. The recent, the past data, the more weight are being added to it. Now, there are two forms of the exponential smoothing. There's the simple exponential smoothing, and there's what we call the adjusted exponential smoothing. Now, let's look at the simple exponential. Let's look at the simple exponential. Let's look at the simple exponential. It's giving us FT plus one. FT plus one is basically the forecast for the next period. T plus one is basically referring to the next period, which is period two, period three, period four, period five. So the future period or the forecasted period is giving us alpha DT plus one minus alpha FT. So please put down this formula. Put down the formula. Now the FT plus one, we said is the forecast for the next period. The DT is the actual demand in the present period. The DT is the actual demand in the present period. The FT, that's the previously demand, uh, the previously determined forecast, the previously determined forecast. That's the forecast for the, the previous period. Then the alpha here are the weights. Those are the weights. We call that the smoothing constant, smoothing constant. But remember that for period one, your demand is always equal to your forecast. So the very first period. So for January, if the demand in January was 10, what it means is that the forecast in January is the same as 10. So the demand is always equal to the forecast you, during the first period. Demand is always equal to forecast during the first period. 
Please put down this formula and let's continue. Put down the formula and let's continue. Now the commonly used values for alpha are usually between 10 and then 50%. So these are the commonly used. It's between 10 and then 50%, depending on whatever the lecturer is asking you to find, usually between 10% and then 50%. So let's look at an example here. Here we're given a smoothing factor of 30%. And then also we're given a smoothing factor of 50%. And we were asked to work with it. The smoothing factor for the first one was 30%, and then the smoothing factor for the second one was 50%. So how do we do that? 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 So let's Can try we to- please see the table again? How do we do that? How do we do that? Remember this formula. Remember this formula. Ft plus one is equal to alpha dt plus one minus alpha Ft. Our alpha was given as 30% and then 50%. Our dt is the demand, the actual demand in the present period, which is there. And then our Ft is the previously determined forecast for the present period, which is also there. So basically here we've computed everything, but how did we get this 37? Remember the 37 here was for period two. The 37 here was the, for period two. So we are trying to find the simple smoothing factor or the simple smoothing, simple exponential smoothing for period two. So Ft plus one. That's F1 plus one, so that's F2. So how do we find F2? Now to find F2, you realize that the demand, the demand in F2, the demand, the demand there, the present demand there was 37. And then the forecast there was also 37. The forecast there was also 37. So it is assumed you don't know, you don't know that of, you don't know, you don't know the value of February. So we are trying to find February. So to do that, you realize that the present demand there was that of January, which was 37. And remember we said F1 is always equal to D1. So the forecasted value for February or for January is the same as the demand for January, which is 37. So you realize that it is 0 0.3, which was the alpha there multiplied by the demand there, which is 37, plus 0 0.7 multiplied by 37, which will, give, which will give us 37. So that was the value, that was the value here. That was the value of the 37 here. That was the value of this 37. That was the value of this 37. Now, how did we get this 37.9? Now, for us to get this 37.9, you realize that the previous data, or the previous demand for the data here was 40 for February. And then the previous forecast here was 37. So we'll use this 40 and this 37 for February to get the forecast of March. So you realize that for F3, which is March, our alpha was 30%, but D2, D2 there was 40, D2 there was 40 plus 0 0.7 multiplied by the forecasted value, forecasted value, which is 37. So you realize that at the end of the day, we'll get 37.9. Now, how did we also get this 38? 
this 38.38. To get this 38.38, what it means is that we are going to use the previous data here for March to predict the forecast for April. So what we'll do is that we'll multiply 0 0.3 by 41 plus 0 0.7 by 37.9, and then we'll get this value. For you to get this 38.28, you realize that you would have to use the previous demand of April and then the forecast of April to do that. That was how come we came together with this whole column known as the alpha of 30%. Now, if they had given us alpha of 50%, it's the same thing. Just that this time around, your alpha value changes from five, from 30% to 50%, from 30% to 50%. 30% to 50%. So if you look at the data, you realize that the forecast, the forecasted values here, they are always lagging behind. So for example, demand was 40 for February, but if you look at the forecasted value there, it was 37 which is smaller than the actual demand. But if you compare the 50% smoothing constant and then the 30% smoothing constant, you realize that the 50% smoothing constant was also higher than the 30% smoothing constant here. So what we say is that low smoothing constants are appropriate for stable demand without trends. Higher constants are appropriate for data with Straight with trend in them. Any question on the exponential smoothing? <laughs> 